Welcome to Module 1, Selecting a Group of Target Schools. My name is Elliot Mark, and over the next several weeks, myself and Donna will take you by the hand and walk you through each step of the recruitment process. Together, we will systematically and strategically crack the code which lies within each module and chapter of this master course. The information you walk away with will allow you to support your child as they navigate the tricky and the technical aspects of this process. But before we move forward, I need everyone to be on the same page. This journey requires teamwork. Parents, it's your job to support your child. Hold them accountable to timelines and deadlines and make sure they are consistent. It is the student athlete's job to take the action. They will be the ones emailing the coaches, setting up the intro calls, the Zoom meetings, asking all the questions and reaping the rewards of their efforts. There is a ton of work to get done. There is no doubt that this is an arduous process, but with teamwork, we will get it done together. So, grab a notebook, grab an iPad, grab whatever you need to take notes, rewind as many times as needed, and most importantly, set a purpose. Set a mental purpose to engage with the material, and Donna will meet you in Module 1, Chapter 1, Selecting a Group of Target Schools. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Donna, a former women's lacrosse player at the University of Florida. I know there's so much to think about and learn as you explore what programs and schools are best for you. We will take this step by step to make it as easy and smooth as possible. I'm happy to be a part of your journey to becoming an NCAA athlete and look forward to taking you through the process. Let's go ahead and start with the first step. The goal of this module is to begin asking the student athlete key questions. So parents, this is where your journey begins. Welcome to the beginning of your transformation process. It starts now. If you stay the course, watch all the videos, do all the homework, and most importantly, engage your child, you will quickly transform yourself into what we call a recruitment professional. Moving forward, step out of your role as a parent and step into your role as a performance coach, supporting your client's goals of finding their dream school and playing at the next level. With that said, we need to understand what your client's dream university looks like. Elliot, having gone through this process with families thousands of times, wants you to remember this. Your child's dream school is not your dream school. Do not inadvertently drown out your child's voice. Let them be heard. We've seen many parents sway their child's decisions because their own fears. Try to be aware of those fears and reframe them to something like this. Is it possible your son or daughter will become more independent and assertive by living on their own and playing at a school across the country? Remember, you're a performance coach, not a parent. Now that we know how to approach the process, let's take a look at module one. We've broken down module one into four key factors, which will play a huge role in the student athlete's decision-making process. These four factors are academics, social life, environment, and athletics. Before we begin breaking down these four key factors, we need to remember that the student athlete's athletic career is four years. And the purpose of college is to prepare the student athlete for the rest of their lives. So it's very important the student athlete is able to be honest with themselves when asking questions like these. Without athletics, will these schools still be a great fit? We ask this overarching question before moving forward because the disruption and anxiety of transferring schools and the impact on transferring credits and athletic qualifications are issues we want to stay clear of. At the end of this first module, you and the student athlete will have a list of 15 to 20 target schools that they can begin reaching out to. So let's get organized and keep track of these target universities and I'll meet you in the next chapter of our module one, academics, which is the first key factor we will review in this process.
In the vital effort to begin narrowing down the student athlete's future dream school, we've created a checklist of five academic oriented questions to go through with the student athlete. These five broad academic questions are a great place to start as they provide the student athlete a general overview of their potential wants, needs, and academic abilities. As you go through this chapter, the student athlete needs to feel comfortable. They need to be open and honest with themselves. It's ego check time. In fact, throughout this entire first module, the student athlete needs to leave their ego at the door. Over the years, and especially today, working with student athletes, we realize that they want to be seen. And why not? It's the culture we live in. Instant access to social media. Always one video away from stardom or going viral. A step away from putting their ego on the map. But remember, this process is not about that. It's about the long game. It's about finding the perfect setting the student athlete will thrive in. If the academics are too hard, they will struggle in all other facets of their college experience. So let's dig in. The first questions we need to ask are number one, does the student athlete have an idea of what they would like to pursue as a course of study? Number two, does the student athlete wanna pursue a broad liberal arts education? Or are they looking to attend an intensive degree focused school, such as an MIT or University of Chicago? Number three, does the student athlete want to pursue a time intensive major, such as pre-med, architecture, or engineering? If yes, what intensity of divisional athletic program will they also realistically be able to attend? Number four, does the student athlete require a smaller class environment with more academic support and resources? Or are they more of an independent learner where the class and lecture hall size will not matter? And lastly, our fifth question. What are the student athletes' current GPA, SAT, and ACT scores? Great, now you have a pretty solid understanding of where the student athlete stands as far as their academic needs and wants. Remember what we spoke about in the beginning of this chapter. Be mindful of keeping the student athlete's ego out of this process. As we go through the rest of this presentation, this will remain constant. Ego, if not kept in check, can be a silent killer. Set your client up for success. Remember, you're their performance coach. Keeping this in mind, let's move on to the next chapter of module one, social life, where we will begin to find out if your client wants to major in Greek philosophy or maybe just the Greek system. The second key factor of the Venn diagram focuses on narrowing down the student athlete's list of target schools based on their social life. Head men's soccer coach at Lehigh University, Dean Kosky, has been quoted several times throughout his career saying this, the college experience can be broken down into three aspects, academics, athletics, and social life. The student athlete can be good at all three, but truly great at only two and it's going to be their decision which two they will focus on. In fact, one of the main reasons I created this master course was not only to help parents and student athletes easily and successfully navigate the NCAA recruitment process, but it was also to allow you guys to have valuable insight and learn from others' past mistakes. I'm a perfect example. Referring back to Dean's quote, my personal order was definitely number one athletics, number two social life and partying and then somewhere in the distant third was academics. Through a bunch of self-reflection and internal work over the past several years, I am able to say, I wish I had made better decisions. I wish I could have made better decisions throughout my career as a student athlete. So as you go through this chapter, just as we did with academics, be mindful of the student athlete you're working with. As a performance coach, challenge them to answer these questions with long-term goals in mind. It will shift their focus and their concentration into a goal-setting mindset. With that said, we have put together six broad questions regarding social life. Questions that you need to consider along with the student athlete so you can begin to understand their needs and wants pertaining to their social agenda. Let's consider the following. One, does the student athlete have interest in the Greek system? Are they looking for a school with fraternities and sororities? Will the student athlete's athletic coach and staff support such involvement? Two, does the student athlete want to commute or do they want to live on campus? Three, what size university is the student athlete going to thrive in? Four, 
Does the student athlete want to have the opportunity to be involved in a broad range of activities and clubs? Five, how diverse of a campus is the student athlete going to be comfortable with? And lastly, number six, does the university need to have a strong religious affiliation? When we answer these questions with the student athlete, we are able to come up with a very specific outline of what type of school they would be a great match for socially. Do your research. Look into the schools that meet these specific criteria. Continue to eliminate the schools that are contradictory to what the athlete is looking for, and then continue along the same path. The questions we pose in this next chapter have to do with environment. This will allow us to start crossing out large sections of the country and really allowing us to pinpoint a geographical region that the student athlete will most likely be heading towards. I look forward to seeing you there. The third key factor of our Venn diagram explores how we narrow down schools based on their environment. When we're speaking about environment, we're trying to narrow down the unique style and type of living situation each school presents so that we can ultimately determine where the student athlete will be the most comfortable and the most successful. This will take into account a whole range of factors from location to climate, even heat and humidity. I can tell you from personal experience Athletes perform best in specific climates. I enjoyed competing in the rain. The cold weather never bothered me, so I applied to predominantly northeastern schools. For me, that was the perfect fit, but it definitely was not for everyone. When I was coaching down in South Florida in the brutal heat and the thick humid air, I watched incoming transfers and freshmen from northern states and northern countries struggle immensely throughout preseason and it was not from their lack of physical preparation. Their bodies were just not used to competing at such a high level under such extreme high temperatures. It took some of these players months, not weeks to adjust. Remember to keep this example in mind when speaking with a student athlete so that you could best guide them. Additionally, here are several other general questions to pose to the student athlete regarding environment. One, does the student athlete want to get away from their normal environment or would they prefer to stay close to home? Two, does the student athlete want to be in a city or on a rural campus? Three, does the student athlete want or need to have a car on campus? Four, does the student athlete want a modern campus or do they appreciate a historic feel and look? Five, does the student athlete want to be in the cold, moderate, or warm climate? Six, does the student athlete have a preference in terms of living style? For example, will they be comfortable in co-ed dorms? Do they prefer a single? Do they want to be living in close quarters with their fellow athletes? Seven, are they looking for the wow factor when it comes to athletic facilities? For example, stadiums, locker rooms. And will they likely really be drawn to universities that have huge crowds attending their athletic events? After you go through these questions, you will probably find that you will be focusing in on a specific geographic area that you and the student athlete have identified. My suggestion is to take everything you have learned so far and start peeling back the onion. Systematically remove each school from the list, which is not a great fit academically, socially, and environmentally. If you started with no list at all, even easier, start researching the schools that meet the specific criteria that you and the student athlete have discussed. You can easily start generating a list of various colleges and universities throughout the country by using our software platform. In this last chapter of Module 1, we will focus on athletics. This is obviously a huge chapter, so take a break, relax, unwind, and we will speak to you in the last chapter of Module 1, Athletics. The last of these four key factors to selecting the perfect university is athletics. Here we are taking into consideration each program the student athlete is looking into. The student athlete has worked their butt off for years, from youth athletics all the way to competing on the fields of play in high school and club sports. Now all their dreams and aspirations are about to be realized. But wait, are their expectations aligned with realities? Do they even know what to expect from the college sports experience? It isn't all Friday Night Lights. 
There are a lot of considerations the student athlete must think through to make their dreams into realities rather than regrets. For starters, let's talk myth versus reality about the college athletic experience from the start. Myth, if the student athlete is not getting contacted by college coaches, they must not be good enough. Reality, if your client wants to play a sport in college, there's a perfect fit out there, but the client needs to take the initiative to ensure success. Unlike the previous three key factors we covered in earlier chapters, academics, social life, and environment, the athletic considerations can be way trickier and much harder to pin down. But let's try together to sort this thing out. The way our staff looks at it, the five most important questions regarding athletics can be open to interpretation. So our staff put our heads together and came up with these questions that need to be explored in further detail with the student athlete. Number one, does the student athlete believe they have a realistic chance of competing at school X? Number two, does the student athlete need or want to compete as a freshman? Number three, does the current roster of School X have depth at the same position in sophomore through incoming seniors as the student athlete you are working with? Number four, does School X have a highly competitive out-of-conference schedule for games or meets? Number five, does School X have a long history of success, including conference titles and NCAA postseason appearances? The answers you receive from just these initial questions may cause you to X out or deselect some of these larger, more competitive schools, perhaps targeting more Division II and III programs, where the student athlete will have a more realistic chance of playing on a consistent basis. Remember what we said earlier, there are three aspects of college you can choose to emphasize when you embark on your student athlete career. Do you recall them? They are academic, athletic, and social. The student athlete needs to choose which two they truly want to be great at. Put those performance coach shoes back on. Try to hardware this into the prospective student athlete's mind. I also want to remind you, when asking these questions, we should also consult the student athlete's current coach or coaches depending upon the sport. As we mentioned earlier, these questions are more open to interpretation. So having an unbiased view of the student athlete you are working with is always paramount. Perfect. Now you have a great general overview of the four key factors that make up the student athlete's future college experience. With this general knowledge, we can begin to narrow down the student athlete's options. So let's move to the last chapter of this module and start understanding where we can do all this research based off the student athlete's responses. See you there.